Hello again, I made a big mistake. I made an earlier video showing how you can use Signal Hub to build a peer-to-peer -peer game. And I've been excited about Signal Hub for a while because I'm like, finally, peer-to-peer -peer is like super easy now. So I made a video making a game with it and I posted it and I was really excited about it. And then shortly after I got this comment. So I'm thinking, what? Of course he uses WebRTC. Let's check the source code here. Oh. It, it doesn't use WebRTC. It uses event source, which is like basically client server, same standard stuff. So I made a big mistake. And well, I think making mistakes is an important part of writing code. I mean, mistakes are kind of how we write code. I mean, I don't think I've ever wrote a piece of code that I didn't make a ton of mistakes before. So thank you, Sherman Miranda, for pointing out my mistake. I really appreciate the polite way in which you did it as well. By pointing out my mistakes, you're really just helping me learn, so thank you. So now to make up for it, we're gonna go back to that original code and we're gonna fix it so it actually does use WebRTC and it actually makes it peer-to-peer. -peer. And then we're gonna do one better and actually add video chatting to our game um, as well. Let's take a look at the code from the earlier video. Now we still want to use Signal Hub because that will take care of all the handshaking and set up all the connections with the other peers. But the thing is, is we don't want to use Hub Subscribe, our uh, Hub Broadcast down here, um, as that just sends data to the server and then out to the clients, and that's not peer-to-peer. -peer. Instead, we want to install a library called WebRTC Swarm. So I'm going to do npm i WebRTC Swarm and save it to my package JSON. WebRTC Swarm will use the Signal Hub to establish the connections with the other peers, but then we'll actually use WebRTC to communicate with the peers. So it gives us a function that we can use to create a swarm. So let's say we'll create swarm equals WebRTC Swarm. And then what we're gonna do is create the swarm. So we'll say swarm equals create swarm. And we're gonna pass it our Signal Hub hub so it can use that to establish all the connections. So now instead of subscribing to this update on our hub, um, the swarm will give us a, an event, so let's we'll say swarm on, when a, a peer connects. And so when a peer connects, it's gonna give us the peer and the ID of that peer. Now peer is an instance of a library called simple-peer, which we've seen before in an earlier video I did on WebRTC. And it's a great library for handling peer-to-peer uh, -peer things, so I'm really glad they're using it. So now what we can do is we can check if we are, have already seen this peer ID before. Um, and if we haven't seen this peer ID before, then we can add it to our players hash here. So we'll say players and use the ID, and we'll create a new player if we've never seen that player before. So now that we're keeping track of all the players, we also need to go down and tell the other people uh, when we've moved and when we've done when we've updated our position and so we're not gonna do that with broadcast here because we don't want to send it to our signal hub server um, instead what our swarm will do is they have this array here uh, of peers and so this is all the peers that are currently um, in the swarm so we can just loop through those and send a uh, message out to every single one of them every time we want to update our position of ourselves on the page and so we can just say peer send and we need to send it some kind of string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stringify uh, the, my, myself, the, the U player that I've created up here. I'm gonna stringify that so I can send that string out to all of the, uh, all the different peers. So say stringify uh, U, and then we'll go down here and we'll send that U string off to everybody uh, in our swarm, awesome. So the last thing we need to do is we need to know when someone else, when a different peer has sent this string to us, we need to listen and get that event. So we can go up here and that anytime we are creating a new player, we can add an event to that peer itself. So we can say peer on data. So anytime the send function is called on a peer, um, it's gonna call this event data here and give us that data that it sent. Now that data will be a string, a stringified JSON object. And so what we need to do is we need to do the opposite here. So let's say JSON parse and that data, it comes in as a, a buffer. And so what we need to do is we need to turn that to a string and then parse it to get our, our JSON object or our JavaScript object back again. So finally, now that we have the data from the other players, we can use this original players ID update event that we created to update the coordinates of that player as they send it to us.
All right, let's test this out. The first thing we want to do is run our Signal Hub server so the peers can find each other. And then we'll go over and run our development server so that way we can uh, host the JavaScript and actually see the page. So anyways, we'll go to localhost 9966 to view it. And we can see our little square there that we can still move around. And so I'll go ahead and open up another tab here. And hopefully I see another square and I see the other square from the other tab. So if I move this one way over there and I go to this tab, I can see that it's way over there. So if I move this one down and jump back to the other tab, you can see it moving down. It appears to be working. Uh, but let's just move these tabs over here and take a look on how it updates in real time. Now that's pretty cool. But now the test, is it actually using WebRTC or am I just making another mistake uh, again? So let's go here and go to our Signal Hub server and we're gonna kill it. Thus, no longer can these peers find new peers or find each other, but they still have the connection set up. So as you see here, um, they are still be able to move around and update and send each other their position, even though we've killed that Signal Hub server. Cool. So if we open up a third tab and go to here, you can see that this guy is all by himself um, because since we disconnected our Signal Hub server, the, the peers can no longer initially find each other. All right, so a good thing to do when a player disconnects here, such as when I'm closing these tabs, um, is to clean up after ourselves. Uh, it's always good to clean up after yourself. And so the Swarm will give us a option to do that. So we'll say on disconnect, disconnect, and this will give us the, the peer and the ID of the, the, the peer that's disconnecting. So with this, we can check our player's array or player's hash here for that ID. And so if it exists, what we want to do is first we want to clean up their elements off the page because we don't want it there anymore, you know, no lingering players around. So let's say players ID, copy that, and we're going to take the element. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the parent node of the element, and then we can call remove child to remove that, uh, that element. And then the last thing we want to do is just when our uh, and just delete the the player out of the uh, the players uh, players out of the players hash there, so we don't leave that lingering around. Cool. So now when we, when a player disconnects, we we handle all the cleanup. Now these colorful squares are rather boring. What we need to do is connect up video chat squares. So first, what we need to do is request the uh, to access the the camera and the microphone from the person because we can't do anything unless we have permission to do those and so we can do that with get uh, user media so we'll say navigator uh, media devices uh, get user media and this will request the microphone and video so we'll say video we want that and then audio we want audio and the microphone um, and so what this will do is this will return a promise here that we can just call then on and this will return the stream if the user has agreed to do it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap this entire code with it because we don't want to do anything unless the user has given us uh, permission to access their microphone and camera here. Excellent. So now that we have the stream coming from our camera and our microphone, we can give this to our swarm so it uh, sends out that stream out to the other peers. And so to do that, there's a second parameter on when you create the swarm of, of different various options. And one of those is the stream. So we're going to provide the stream that we got from our camera and microphone and give it to our swarm. Now we want to add the video stream from our own camera to our own little player square, as well as see the other player video streams. So we'll need to make some updates to our player class here. The first thing we want to do is instead of a div tag here for the element uh, that represents the square, we're going to use a video tag so we can display video instead. Then the next thing we need to do is give it a way to add a stream or basically set the, the source of this video to the stream as we get it. So we're gonna add a function here called add stream and it's gonna take a parameter called stream. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the element that is this video tag that we've just created and we're gonna set the source object to that stream. And then what we're gonna do is call play to start playing that video or that, that streaming video. Now another thing is 16 by 16 would be pretty small videos, so we're gonna update that to 64 by 64 to make this just a little, little bigger so we can see these videos. Then back to our main code. When we set up our cells, we wanna see our cells in our, in our little play video, so we need to add their stream. So when we requested the stream from our own camera here, we can add it here by calling you. Uh, add stream, the function we just added, and give it the stream here. 
Then going on down to any time we get a new uh, player connected, we also want to add their stream to um, to their little their little element. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the the player, the other player um, that's coming in, and we're going to call add stream on them, and we get the stream uh, from uh, peer dot stream here, um, so we can add their video to their little square. Cool. Now let's give it a go. Let's refresh the page. It's going to request access to my microphone. And now I'm going to get like this super crazy echo. But hi. Um, and so I can move around. And now I'm going to open up in another tab. And hopefully I get myself twice. Oh, wait. We didn't start up our uh, Signal Hub server again. Let's do that. And now refresh the page on both. And there you go. We have two little videos of my ugly face. And this, and this, and this delay, delay thing is really, really, really freaking really out. out. Well, I can fix that by taking off these headphones. And then I don't hear that crazy delay anymore. So let's test to see if this is still working over WebRTC. Let's go here and let's kill our signaling server and start moving our tabs around. Let me move this little guy out into the side so we can see it simultaneously here. And here I'll move this square around. You can see that version of me moves around and then move this around, that one works. So yeah, even though our signaling server is disconnected, it's still uh, streaming and, and broadcasting over WebRTC. That's pretty cool. So thank you for letting me fix my mistake. And if you've ever made a mistake, then share this video and other people will make mistakes I guess. Anyways, uh, if you want to see more videos, then please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.